the lessons. First of all, I'm disappointed in, uh, in the fact that, that, that the prime lamb cut dark in, partial, in parts of it, and we're, we're trying to address that situation because all the way through the process there's been so much effort and, and uh, so much hope put on that lamb and everybody thought that was the best one. Look great, cuts are good, everything's perfect, but the color is off in part of the, of the meat. So is that just an issue because it was killed so quickly after it arrived? Or is there some other outstanding issue? But then what I learned as a producer is that that is significant to the, to the retailers to the processors and the retailers because when those things happen that can be waste for them or it can be maybe not waste but a product that's not going to end up in the market that it intended. And certainly the whole aspect of waste, not waste but trim and, and effort and time that it takes, uh, you know as producers sometimes you think you put the lion's share of the effort into it. We do put a lot of effort in but I think everyone else does as well and so you get to appreciate the uh, why, why, why the cost of the, re the retail cuts are what they are? Though I think I know what a good product is leaving my farm, I was, it was very interesting to see the variables along the line, uh, starting right from what you saw from your eye to when you put your hand on it and right through processing. And I think if there was anything to be learned out of this, it's how important it is for industry leaders in this, in this industry to, to put producers with processors, with customers, and make sure we're in line with what what we're producing and what they want. I found the last two days really a uh, big eye-opener for me because uh, I haven't seen this side of, uh, of lamb production and uh, it really became apparent to me how important it is at the farm level to pay attention to detail and by detail I mean um, uh, the, the, the uh, putting your hands on those animals, feeling and not just having a look at them and saying, well, they're, you know, they're 55 kilos, so it's time for it to go. Because when, when you see them hanging on the rail, I mean, that's like the, 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 the book has been opened. And, and now you're, you're really looking at them. But what, what I found really interesting, um, there were two things in particular. One, that, uh, that we had this darker meat coming out of a lamb that was on farm treated with care. Uh, it had the right... It had water, it had feed, it wasn't stressed out, and yet uh, when we broke it open, um, it wasn't dark and it wasn't light, it was both. And uh, so why is that? Well, I, I, you know, I, I found that interesting. Uh, finally, I would say um, what shocks me is the amount of reduction in weight from uh, a hanging carcass to the final product in the store. And that speaks volumes to me as to why the price of lamb is higher than other, um, other proteins. Um, take home message. We do a lot of work on the farm and it's all for naught if that lamb is a dark cutter. Cut the, uh, uh, the, the uh, grocery store doesn't want it, and most importantly, the customer doesn't want it. So, uh, again, it's on attention to detail, uh, keeping your lambs stress free, feeding them well. Well, I think um, what, one of the take home messages out of all this was that, that the variability in the carcasses that we're producing are definitely directed to different markets, and we have to be aware of the markets we are targeting our product to reach. And, and get good at doing that part of our job so that we're not trying to jump into different markets for different reasons. So that I, I think one, one of the great messages of the last two days, a huge take home message is the communication, is us as producers getting together with the processors and the retailers and following the product and having a look and see what happens in the different stages and how much we can all learn from one another. Um, it's, the last two days have been hugely valuable for that and I hope we can continue this type of conversation where we all learn and get to understand one another's positions. Um, I guess on, on our side, uh, uh, learning to take home, um, you know, we, on, in my environment, we talk about pride, passion, and, and, and dedication. I think there's a lot of that here in this room. And, uh, and like everyone's saying here, sticking together, trying to get the, to, that, <laughs> to the goal together would help everyone in the end. Um, not just one or, or you know, two parties, but everybody. And at the end of the day, the customer 
um, is, is my boss, <laughs> and they tell us what they want. So we just got to figure out a way how to deliver it. Well, on a personal level, in my, when we've done certain projects throughout the years, I um, started going out to producers and understanding them, um, working you know, with, with Nick, with Joe, with, with the halal market, with the premium market, with everybody. I noticed that everyone was working hard, really hard. And there were some obvious things that could help if we all understood what everybody does. So really, who puts the money in, into our sector? The customer. The rest of us all move the money around. But really, the revenue source is the customer. To the retailer, to us, to you. And that's who we've got to please.